Hello and welcome to the SD30. This is lecture 20 and this is lesson 3. So in this particular lesson I'm going to look at coding up our basic RESTful API. So we need to generate our basic server. So we create a skeleton server and if you remember correctly we called it server.js. We create that in the apps root directory and then we uh, get We'll just include a single route for this one, which will be handled by ExpressJS in the first instance. And that's just a test to make sure everything works. In other words, that the modules that we require Express um, and body parser are up and running work and working properly. Remember, the body parser is the middleware that gives us access to the request and response objects. And we've seen this before. Um, you may have missed it, but we've used it over and over again. And again, it inherits this, of course, from the HTTP model. So we're going to have a simple get root, and that returns a welcome message to clients. So we can tell our server to listen to port um, 3000. Okay, so here we, we load in Express, we load in body parser. We create a new app, which is an Express app, okay? And we're going to tell the app that we're going to be able to parse JSON, and we're going to be able to parse URL encoded uh, uh, data. Now we remember, this was important, and we knew how we were going to move data, you know, when we needed to create and update um, um, quotations. So then we just, um, we're going to create a single root, okay? And that root will be for the root, okay? And we're going to return some J. Whenever we get a root, the, uh, the server will respond by saying, this is my quotations app. So this is just a root that wasn't actually included in our, in our API specification because they all begin with slash quotations, okay? Then we're going to listen on that server for the app. And that's it. It's very, very nice and it's easy to do. Let's copy this. Put it into, into created it into a server. So um, I have a server. Okay, I have this one working already. So let's let's do this. Um, we save it as server.js. I'll be overwriting my working server. So let's go into the quotations app here, and we're going to call it server.js. And we'll overwrite this one that I have already. I have it saved. Okay, and now let's go down here and let's. Um, Start our server, and let's clear. Okay, and we'll say, server.js, we just started using this. Okay, and the server's listening on port 3000, which is what we want and expect. So we want to be able to talk to that um, server. So let's, let's talk to that server, and it's um, 3000, so let's um, open up another window here. And we'll curl over here. And we get this message back telling us that my quotations app is running and it's fine. So we know our service is working. And now we start working on fleshing it out. Okay? Okay. So what we want to be able to do, and as, as you would expect, we can use curl to test. Okay? So now we need to set up our mongoose, okay? So we're going to essentially reuse the Node.js MongoDB connection that we used in the last set of lectures. Remember, mongoose is just a library that sits on top of the, Mongo, um, the MongoDB library, our module. And we are going to, um, uh, we had a connection file that I used last time, let me show you. Um, so here was the connection file. So we basically exported the database URL with all our details for the user and pass. This is an anonymous one that I'm using just for demo purposes. But you know, you put in your details and you can connect. And I'm actually using, this time I'm using the test database um, on my local server. I could have used Atlas as well, okay? So basically here is the, the one that I'm using. And now what I'm going to do is I've created this in the, in, and put it into my, my um, config directory, okay? Um, So um, let me have a quick peek here. We could kill the server. I'm in my quotations app. And you'll see that I have a config directory here. And I'll just list. And you can see it just has my connect anonymous and my connected JS. So that's good. We have this working and it's fine. So now let's um, see what we need to do next. Okay, so what we can do is instead of, as I said, we're going to use Mongoose. And so we'll set up Mongoose. And here's the code to set up Mongoose. So we'll go to um, 
make a connection to DB Connect. We're going to load that connection. We know that that's um, um, available. And um, we'll use Mongoose. And now we set up connection. So here we are, and we see this promise type structure again here. So we connect to the database using the URL that we had from our, our, our file, connect.js. Um, we're going to need to set these two uh, variables here as part of the connection because there's some deprecation of functions and we need to be able to get um, uh, get it without warnings. Then, we'll, if we are successful, then we're going to say pr print a message, say we've connected to the database. Otherwise, we catch the error, which tells us we're not able to connect, and we kill ourselves. So that tells us why. If everything works correctly, we should be able to get that going. Okay. So we need to take this and add it to our our new server, and we will here. Save this. Let's go and run our server again. And now it tells us that we've connect, successfully connected to the, Mongoose, um, the MongoDB database. So it's perfect. So that works fine. So we know that works as well. Okay. So let's then, um, so all that stuff works just fine. Okay. So now we need to look coding up the RESTful API. So one of the things we need to do here is we need to set up the model um, for Mongoose. So it knows what it can it can do when um, it, it knows about the server, um, the, the, the database server, and the kind of data model that we're going to be using. So what we need to do actually next is we're going to define the quotation model. And then um, we had a description for it earlier, and we're going to look for a basic one. We're not going to look at anything in detail. And what we do is we'll save the model in a separate JavaScript file, because we might want to play with different models a little bit later. So what we do is we create a directory called slash app slash models. And then um, you'll see that I've created those already um, 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 here. And I'll just, and you'll see that I have uh, an app directory here. I'm going to, and you'll see that I have models. I, you'll notice that I also have um, down here uh, roots and controllers, but for now we need models. So that's where you put our model, okay? And let's have a look at the model. We must be, um, and we're calling it a quotation model. And this is the model that will be used um, by Mongoose. And this, remember, this model will allow us to be able to switch between a Java script um, object and the JSON or BSON data model that's stored and used with, with um, MongoDB. Okay, so here's the model. So I created a directory. I, I copied all this stuff here directly into the model and there it works. Okay, and then one of the things that will be different from the uh, model example that we talked about early on is I'm actually adding um, timestamps um, to the model. And this is interesting because it allows us to be able to find out when a particular quotation was created or when it was updated, all that kind of information. So um, this is the created at and the updated at uh, fields that will be added to this. And if you like, they're metadata rather than the data associated with the quotation. And they're the, they're the kind of thing that will be useful for us when we want to analyze and say, well, you know, how many how many quotations were saved to the database on a particular day, or how many have been updated since they were, they were you know, they were changed and so forth. Um, but anyway, we basically look at Mongoose. We use mongoose.schema in order to be able to create this schema. It just takes um, as input the JSON that we used previously. We're going to call it quotation schema because that's what we, we like to have, and then we'll export this quotation schema um, as a, a quotation. Okay, so that's it. For this one so we'll just leave it there and we'll continue in the next lesson